Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's look at another problem, a medium one, simplify path. So we're given a path, like the path to a directory or something or a file like on your computer. And so it's an absolute path. It's guaranteed to be an absolute path, right? And you might remember an absolute path is one that starts from the root directory, right? That's what they're telling us. It's always going to start from the root directory. And all we're trying to do is convert it or to simplify it, right? We're trying to reduce it to its most simplified form. And why would we want to reduce it? Well, you might remember from using a file system that the dot operator or the period refers to the current directory you're in, right? So that's kind of, it can be redundant sometimes. And so we're going to be reducing that and it'll probably make more sense when we look at some examples. And you might also remember that the double dot will take you up one directory. So outside of the current directory that you're in, right? So that can also be reduced. And so the last thing that we're able to reduce is multiple consecutive slashes. So if you had two slashes in a row, you were going to be reducing that to a single slash, right? You can't really have multiple slashes in a row. That's really it. So we have only three things to worry about. Everything else that comes in between slashes are going to be file names, even if we get a file named dot, 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 right? That's going to be treated as a file name. ABC is going to be a file name. XYZ, whatever you want, is going to be a file name. And over here, they just give us some details about the simplified path. It's always going to start with a slash. Any two directories are going to be separated by a single slash. The path does not end with a trailing slash. So that's also something we can reduce. And the last thing they tell us is that we do not contain any dot or double dot based because we can reduce these. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So let's say that this was our input string. You can see we have the root slash, right? The root, then we get a dot dot. Then we get another file named ABC. Then we get a double slash, right? You can see the double slash over here. And in between that, we have another file, which is the current directory. It's just a dot. And last, you have another file or directory. And then it ends with a slash. So we want to reduce this. How are we going to reduce it? So quickly, before we actually start translating the input to the simplified path, let's just quickly go over what this means. So let's say we have a file ABC, we continue our path, and then we do the double dot operator. How can we simplify this path? Well, as you know, the double dot operator just tells us to go out one directory. What does out one directory mean? Well, we start at the root path, right? Then we're in ABC. Assume it's a directory, right? Inside of ABC, then we perform the double dot, meaning we want to go outside of ABC. We want to pop ABC from our stack, right? That's how we're going to actually be solving this problem. What I'm saying is that once we encounter this double dot operator, what that's going to tell us is in the simplified path, right? That's what we're uh, doing over here is we're not going to include this double dot in the simplified path so we can cross it out. Also, the double dot is going to indicate to us that we can pop one more directory. So we're also not going to include the ABC in the path. So ultimately, when we take this string and then we translate it, what we're going to get is just a single uh, root directory, right? Because we're going outside of the directory that we're in. Now, very quickly, uh, if we had a single dot operator, it would be slightly different. Single dots are always just going to be ignored. They tell us we're in the current working directory, right? So we, we start, we're inside ABC, then from inside ABC, we do this operation, right? Meaning we just stay where we are. We're not moving anywhere. So I'm going to handle this by just ignoring the dots. So when we make our simplified path, we're going to have A, B, C. We're not going to have a trailing slash, but that's all we're going to have. We're not going to include that dot anywhere. So with that being said, we can start reading the input. How we're going to handle this problem is by reading the input from left to right character by character, right? So we're going to start at the initial uh, root directory, right? The slash, we can take that, add it. Now we get a double dot. That tells us we can go out one directory, but right now we are inside the root directory. 
Is it possible for us to go outside of the root directory? No. So we're not actually popping anything in this case. We're just going to be ignoring this double dot. We're not going to include it. So that file is not included. Now we get to another slash, right? But we don't want to have multiple consecutive slashes. It doesn't make sense. So we're going to also ignore this slash. We're not going to add it. But now we get to an actual directory ABC. We can take that and add it to our simplified path. Next, we get to a slash. We can take one slash and add it, but we don't want to add this second slash. We don't want to have consecutive slashes. So we're just going to cross that one out. Next, though, we get to a dot directory. Remember how we're going to be handling these. We're not going to be adding them to the simplified path. We're just going to be ignoring them. Great. We can ignore it. Next, we have to another slash. We don't want multiple consecutive slashes. So get rid of that. Now we get to another actual file, def. Great. We can add it to the simplified path. And last character in the input is another slash. We know that in the simplified path, we don't want it to end with a slash. So we can leave this as it is. This is our result. This is our simplified path. By the way, the time and memory complexity, so the time and memory complexity is going to be overall big O n because we're just having to scan through the entire input string, right? That's big O n time because the size of that string is going to be n, let's say. Also, we are going to technically need some memory to create the simplified list. So that's also going to take memory, but I'm also going to be using a data structure in this problem that I didn't mention yet. We're going to be using a stack. Why are we using a stack? stack for this problem. The main reason is because of the double dot operator, right? This double dot is the reason. Okay, so let me just show you a quick example of why we're going to use a stack and then I'm going to jump into the actual coding solution. Let's say we were reading our input string, right? Let's say this was our input string and we're reading. We take the A, we add it to our stack. We take the B, we add it to our stack. We take the C and we add it to our stack. So far, we're doing good, right? But now we get a double dot. What does the double dot tell us? It tells us that we're going to remove the previous file or directory or whatever from our uh, simplified path, right? We're not going to be including that in this simplified path. So really what we're going to be doing in our code is we're going to take this double dot, translate it into a pop function call for our stack. What is the pop going to do in this case? Well, it's going to take the most recently added element, the C, and remove it from our stack. Now we have another double dot operator. What are we going to do? Once again, we're going to call pop on our stack, remove the most recently added value, right? So this is why a stack is going to be useful for us because we're going to be removing potentially the most recent element that we added. And we're also potentially going to be doing it multiple times, right? Like we see here, we have multiple double dot operators. So that's how we're actually going to be solving this problem. Now it'll make even more sense when I show you the code for this solution. So as I said, we are going to use a stack data structure. So let's do that. We're also going to have a variable current. So this is going to tell us the current file or path that we are building or looking at because we know it could have multiple characters in it. Basically, this cur is going to store every is going to be storing the most recent file or directory uh, before a slash shows up. So we're going to go through every single character in the input path that was given to us plus one last ending slash. I'm going to add a trailing slash to this problem, uh, to this input string path, just because it's going to make our code work out easier. So we're, we're checking if C is equal to the slash. That's going to be a special case basically for us, right? And the else case is that if it's not a slash, so if it's any other character, this is the easy case for us. If we get a character that is not a slash, what are we going to do? We're simply going to take that character, add it to our current file that we're looking at, right? So this is all we're doing. We're just building whatever that file name happens to be. Now, once we actually reach a slash, there are a couple cases that we have to handle. As we know, one of the cases is that what if the current file that we have built so far is equal to double dot? 
Basically, we reached a slash, and what if that current file that we've been building so far happens to be a double slash? What are we gonna do in that case? Well, we're gonna pop from our stack, right? Simple as that, it's very easy. All we have to do is pop from our stack, but we can only do that if the stack is non-empty. So I'm just gonna add that quick condition here. If stack is non-empty, then we're gonna pop from it. Right, that's one case. Now we also know that there are a couple other cases. What if, and one other case is if current does not equal empty, right? If it's not empty, because remember we could have multiple consecutive slashes, which would cause us to have a current string that is empty. And if current does not equal that dot operator, if this is the case, current is not empty and it's not the dot operator, then we can take this file, this current file, and add it to our stack. And basically, once we've done this, right, we're basically updating the stack. We're either adding a file to our stack or we're removing a file from our stack, right? And once we've done that, then we can reset the file. Basically, we can reset our current variable, reset it to be an empty string. So this might look a little complicated, but really all we're doing is going character by character, building a file path. And then once we reach a slash character, then we're actually adding that file or popping a file from our stack. Remember, we actually want to ultimately build a simplified path, right? We haven't done that. We have our stack, but we haven't, right? The stack right now, all it really contains is the files, right? This is what our stack potentially looks right, right? ABC and maybe DEF, right? There's no slashes anywhere to be found here. So what am I going to do to actually build that simplified path? I'm going to take, I'm basically going to join these strings together so I can do that. Join every string in our stack with the delimiter, which is the slash. So it's basically going to take these strings, put a slash in between them. I also want to start our string with a slash. So I'm going to say slash plus that, right? This is going to make sure that there's a slash at the beginning. This is going to put a slash in between these. And then all that's left for us to do is return this value. And that's actually the entire code. It is a little tricky, but once you realize that the stack is going to be helpful for us in dealing with this double dot operator, and you kind of, the, the, the main trick I used was building the current file and then adding only the file to our stack. We're not adding any slashes. That makes things easier for us. So those are like the tricks. I think generally though, this problem there's nothing super fancy that we're doing, so hopefully this video is helpful for you. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot, and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.